Hey, what's going on guys? Shane here. Fancy Anomaly. And today we're covering the switch kick or the shuffle lead leg roundhouse kick. Now a lot of people have questions about this one. They have a lot of trouble as beginners because it's the non-dominant leg, right? And try brushing your teeth with your non-dominant hand. It's awkward, it's hard, you don't have as many reps with it. So let's cover the mechanics and then different variations of how to throw the switch kick. Okay, so let's first demonstrate a couple of switch kicks done in correct form. So I can throw this to the legs, I can throw it to the body, I can throw it to the head. Um, just for the sake of this video, I'm gonna throw it to the same spot. Just gonna go high up on the shoulders. This is a great way to do damage to the forearms. It's a great kick for if you're fighting a, a heavy puncher, someone who likes to throw a lot of punches. So what it looks like is the switch and the kick. One more time, switch, kick. Now, a couple of key points here. The first one is the switch itself. I'm not switching my hips, meaning my hips are facing this way when I'm in my stance. I'm not switching completely to where my hips and chest are facing the different direction. In fact, my hips are facing the same way, so if I keep my fingers pointing here, locking on my hips, I'm doing this. So I'm switching my feet, and a lot of people step way too far back, and they step this foot all the way back here. It's way too much distance, it's way too much time, and you don't want to get that low. You want to stay relatively tall when you do this. So what I'm going to do is instead of stepping back with my lead foot, I'm stepping out that way. So I'm kind of keeping it in the same line, okay? So I switch to here. Like I said, less distance means a faster kick. As I do this, I'm gonna bring this arm up, so I'm gonna to start to rotate the shoulders the same direction that the kick is going. So when I shuffle, this arm comes across, and we call this the Dracula guard, right? Like I got my cape. So I'm protecting my face here, so if Vince were to throw a punch, whether it's a right hand, a jab, anything, I'm relatively protected at this point. This hand, just for sake of uh, balance or counterweight, I like reaching for the gun in the holster. And then when I actually throw the kick, this arm is gonna swing towards Vince, and this still acts as defense, and this one comes up to my head, okay? So I'm here loaded up, and then boom, come to this position here. The faster that I swing my arm, the faster that my kick is gonna come up and, and strike, okay? You don't wanna kick up. That's another common mistake to where people do this, and they throw a soccer kick, and I kick Vince's elbow, and then I break my foot or hurt my shin, no good. It's a horizontal kick, so you really wanna turn it over, as they say, meaning I'm kicking parallel with the ground. So again, not kicking up, and again, I don't wanna do this with my arms. I'm not running, I wanna bring it over for that Dracula guard. If my arm is horizontal, more likely my kick is going to be horizontal too. So here, when I throw that kick. Okay, now let's talk about a little more specifics. I wanna pivot on the ball of my foot. A lot of people, when they throw the switch kick, stay flat-footed on this. You can stay flat-footed if you're going to the legs, but anything higher than the leg to the body, upper body, or to the head, I want to get to the ball of my foot, okay? It's going to be less uh, friction on the ground, means I'm going to pivot a little bit faster, I'm going to stay tall, I'm going to throw that kick quicker, okay? So again, I switch, Dracula guard, reach for the gun, and then at this point, I go up to the ball of my foot. This is the common mistake. We see this a lot. It can work. You can still get a lot of damage on that kick, more contact on the ground. But if you want to do it correctly, you want to get a little more whip into that kick, go up onto the ball of your foot. Boom, right here, okay? Hitting with the lower half of the shin, so if you imagine putting on those, uh, those ankle guards in Muay Thai, pretty much right here is where I make contact. Lower half of the shin, upper half of the foot, and that's where I can get most whip into my kick, do the most damage. Like I said in the beginning, if I'm fighting a heavy puncher, I can do a lot of damage to the forearm. And that's why I like kicking up high towards the shoulders, because it's hard for him to catch the kick. If I kick a little bit lower to the body, exactly, he can catch that kick. And from here I'm on one leg, he can follow up with punches, he can take me down, what have you. So that's just an added bonus right there. You want to kick a little bit higher, a little bit safer, do damage to the forearms. That's a great one right there. Okay, so just recapping on our points here. We're switching and we're not stepping all the way back. We're stepping out. We're going with the Dracula guard and this protects me from incoming punches. Even when it's extended, I go here and even if he throws a right hand, I'm protecting my face with my shoulder. This arm's long, I'm kind of negating any shots from coming in. What's wrong with this picture? I'm flat footed so I need to be on the ball of my foot. And the last key point is keep the upper body tall. Notice how my head is over the support leg. A lot of people lean back. It's usually a flexibility issue that people do this. Uh, some people say it's, it's to evade shots but you don't want to divide your energy. I don't want some of my energy going that way and the lower half of my energy going this way. So try to keep your head over that support leg when you do it. So one more time, boom. Notice my head is right over top of that. It's not here and I'm falling back, okay? 
So there are the key points, but like anything else, you need to rep it out. You need to get those reps in if you want to do this correctly. There you have it. It's one of my favorite kicks to throw. Very versatile, uh, hard to see coming, and has a lot of application. So make sure you master it. I know it's probably going to be awkward at first, but once you get it down, you're going to start winning more fights or more sparring matches and just have more weapons in your arsenal. Until next time, follow Vince. Link's in the description below for his Instagram. Follow this man on his MMA journey. Uh, and subscribe to Fight Tips to get those fight tips before your opponent does. I'm Shane. Fancy Nolly. For the underdogs.